Hello again! Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about non-Mendelian genetics. But before we get uh, started into these questions, I want to explain the difference between multiple alleles and polygenic inheritance one more time because you might still be confused. Okay, so in order to understand these two, you have to understand what a gene is and what an allele is. So a gene is a sequence of DNA, right? You have your long chromosome and you have a segment of it. Um, so a sequence of DNA that is coded for a single trait or protein. So it's it's basically a, a control, right? It's like a light switch that controls the light. Okay. So multiple alleles is different from your general Mendelian genetics because regular Mendelian ge genetics only has a dominant versus recessive. So dominant versus recessive, that's two different versions of the same gene, right? It's like having two markers. They're both markers, but you have purple marker and you have pink marker. And but they're both markers, okay? So uh, however, in the case of multiple alleles, instead of just having dominant and recessive, you could have maybe two dominants and one recessive that will give you three different alleles. Or you can have three dominant and one recessive that will give you four different alleles, right? So our typical example that we've talked about in class is our ABO blood type, right? As you can see, we have one piece of gene right here. It's one gene. It, it is just the same as Mendelian genetics is one gene, right? It's one switch, one light switch controlling one thing. So it's one gene controlling one trait, for example, the blood type. However, there could be three different versions of the gene. Instead of just having big A, little a, uh, maybe you can have IA, IB, and little IO, right? So you have two dominant alleles and one recessive allele together. That's multiple alleles. That's more than three or, or three or above different variations or different uh, versions or alleles for one trait, in this case, the blood type, okay? So that's multiple alleles. Uh, how does polygenic inheritance work, right? So polygenic, if you think about the word, it's instead of only one gene, so one control for one trait, you have multiple controls for the same trait. It's as if you have a light, and instead of having a just on or off button, or maybe on or dimmer or off, you can have multiple light switches controlling the same light, and it's gonna give you purple light or green light or whatever, but there are multiple switches controlling the same light. That is called uh, polygenic inheritance. Exactly what it means. It means multiple genes, right? So if you look over here, um, you can see uh, my, my idea over here is that instead of just having one gene and one chromosome, we can have this A gene, we can have B gene, C gene, D gene. All four of these genes could be controlling the same trait, such as height or eye color or uh, skin color, right? So instead of just having on or off or in the middle or kind of in the middle several different versions of the same trait you have a whole variety of the trait for height for example you have a whole scale a whole range of all different kinds of height that's multiple genes controlling the same trait this is one gene controlling one trait one gene multiple alleles multiple genes doesn't matter how many alleles there are we don't really care okay so in the in the case of markers you can think about uh, instead of just having the markers you can have some sharpies and you have some the highlighters together they control your collection of pens i don't know if that makes sense i hope that makes sense um, but if you look over here this little dot over here is my combinations of all four of these colors uh, depending on how much of each i put in there if you, uh, well, well you get the idea i think um, you mix all four factors all different kinds of factors controlling to the same trait um, that your body is trying to build. That is polygenic inheritance. So now we can move on to the easier stuff that is not as confusing. Starting with number 10. How many genes affect one trait? Well, norm normally we always have one gene, one trait. So, uh, so one gene. Okay, so we have one control up and down. Uh, you have on or off button for a, one trait. You have red eye, for for fruit fly for, for fruit fly or a white eye for a fruit fly for example it's just one gene controlling this one trait how many allele for each gene uh, that will be two what do we mean by a dominant allele is complete dominant so complete dominance means when you have the dominant and the recessive the dominant completely covers up the recessive you can't see a single single um, trace of what is going on with the recessive at all because the dominant covered it okay so that is the uh, complete dominance. The dominant and the recessive, they're both showing up together, you actually only see the dominant trait. If you had incomplete dominance, that means you only covered it up a little bit. I want to see how that works. 
are the genes located on the same chromosome um, in Mendelian genetics? The answer is no. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> when we talk about the, the P color, whether it's yellow or green, and then we have the ring color and the round, the reason why you can have the FOIL method giving you all kinds of uh, 4 by 4 Punnett square and all that is because the roundness and the color of the P are uh, located on two different chromosomes. So, so they're not related at all. Okay. Um, which type of inheritance is similar to the blending hypothesis? That is our incomplete dominance. So that's the case of if you were to have red flower and white flower, and then you end up getting a pink flower, which is kind of an in-between situation, that is called incomplete dominance. It's, yeah, that's incomplete dominance, okay? So that's very similar to the blending hypothesis where you have two traits and it just kind of clashes and blends together. That is our incomplete dominance. How many traits contribute to the same gene in multiple alleles? As we said, it's still one gene. Um, how many alleles exist on a population level in the, in the scenario of multiple alleles? The whole point of multiple alleles is that it's more than two, so it has to be three or more. It could include three. How many genes contribute to the same trait? In the scenario of polygenic inheritance, the word polygenic means multiple genes. So now you have multiple genes. So, so instead of having one factor controlling one trait, you have multiple factors thrown at it again uh, together, and then you end up with one trait of some sort. And then which type of inheritance results in a range of traits? That is our polygenic inheritance as well. That will give you a range of traits instead of just distinctly dominant, recessive, um, something in between, another dominant of some sort. Which type of inheritance? Oh, okay. Besides genotypes, what else contributes to an organism's phenotype? That will be the environment, right? Think about your height. It is not just controlled by uh, the genes that you have. It is also very much related to what kind of food you eat. Do you exercise? Um, did you grow up uh, healthily? Things like that. Um, okay, so that's 19. What, what kind of exercise do you do, right? Number 20, complete dominance. Okay, now uh, your regular complete dominance. We have red flower, white flower, a quick pun and square. Shall we? Um, so you should know how to do this planet square, but I'm just going to do it real quick, just so we're all on the same page. We have big R, big R, little r, little r, right? Both are, uh, dom both are homozygous, homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive. You will end up with big R, little r, big R, little r, big R, little r, big R, little r. We just did X-linked. Why don't we do X-linked over here? Because it didn't tell you. If it doesn't tell you that it's X-linked, it's not. Okay, so you just do your regular Punnett square. They're all big R, little r's. So if this were to be complete dominance, um, big R, the red, is going to completely cover up the white. So when you have a heterozygote individual, um, you would end up with red, right? So the answer to this question is red. In comparison for com incomplete dominance, you still draw the Punnett square exactly how you always would. However, the phenotype of the heterozygote individual is going to be different. So in this case, instead of being red, right, normally it should be red, you would have pink. So this is called incomplete dominance. You blend the two colors together. If you had co-dominance, that's another scenario, right? You're still going to draw the Punnett square exactly how you normally would. But instead of pink, now you would have red and white spotted flower. Right, you have patches of the petal that has red color, patches of the petal that has the white color, right? So this is called codominance because both colors are actually showing up at the same time, right? That this is kind of dominant, but this is dominant at the same time. It doesn't really matter which one is dominant because they're all going to show up. So in this case, the, the color will be red and white spotted, okay? Um, now, let's look at a scenario that is made up. So we have smiley faces. We have eye shape that could uh, be starred, circular, or a circle with a star. As you can see, instead of using one type of letter, we are using different letters because um, we're showing codominance. Okay. So for A, we have the circle um, that will be CC. We have the star, which is SS. And then circle star is CS. How can you tell that this is codominance? Because 
uh, was your heterozygote individual the CS, right? It's not homozygous because you have two different letters, but there's two uh, different letters as in uh, one dominant, one capitalized letter and one lowercase letter, or if you just have two complete different letters, it's still not homozygous because there are two different letters, okay? But in this case, instead of having the one trait being covered up uh, completely um, in the case of complete dominance, we have both traits showing up at the same time. So we have a circle star I as our CS, okay? So now we're gonna do a cross um, between a star eyed, so in this case, the star I is our SS, and then we're doing a circle I, we see C, and then as you can see, all, oh, got it backward. All the offspring are gonna be CS. It doesn't matter really which one you write, which letter you write first, but in this case, it already tells you that the um, it should be CS, right? So the phenotypes of these offsprings are going all going to be CS, and they will have star eyes, right? This blank shouldn't be here. W what about the genotypes? All the genotypes should be CS, right? That's pretty easy. This is a very um, visual representation of how codominance works. You see both traits at the same time. Show a cross between two circle starred eyed individuals. So how does this work? Circle star is CS, so we have CS, we have CS again, put the letters together, CC, CS, CS, SS. All right, we have our four individuals. Um, so in this case, how many are circle dies? One. How many are circle star died? Two. How many are star eyed? One. Okay or one out of four, uh, if it's asking for the chances of each happening. That should be pretty easy. Now we're moving on to a more challenging question. So in this question, we have skin color, right? It tells you that skin color is a polygenic inheritance, as you can see. Um, polygenic inheritance, again, is not just one trait. Well, it is one trait. It's not just one gene, instead of having just big A, or a little eye, you can have A, B, C, really is more than three factors controlling your skin color, but right now we're still simplifying and pretending that there are only three genes, polygenic, three genes controlling this one trait, skin color, okay? So the dominant allele darkens the skin. Um, so you can count how many dominant alleles can you have. So right now, it's, it's not gonna ask you to draw a, whatever, nine by nine hundred square or whatever, um, but you need to be able to figure out the genotype of the gametes nonetheless. So in this case, we have three different traits. You haven't done this before, but it's not that difficult. Let's try it. So we have big A, big A, big B, little b, big C, little c, as mom, right? So when a gamete is formed, you want to only end up with one allele for each gene, right? Right now we have three different alleles, we have the A allele, or, or uh, three different genes, we have the A gene, one factor, B gene, another factor, C gene, another piece of DNA, or a factor that controls what your skin color is going to end up being, but then when you're forming a gamete, you only have one allele for each gene. What does that mean? You are only picking out one color, <laughs> one letter of each kind, right? So for the big A, you can only come up with big A. But then for the B, you can have big B or little b. And then for the C, you can have big C or little c, right? So what are all the combinations of A, B, and C that we can come up with? We can have big A, big B, big C. Oh, that is not a C. <coughs> Excuse me. You can have big B, a big A, big B, big C. That's a possibility of A, B, C, right? You can have big A, big B, little c. That's a possibility. You have big A, little b, big C. You have big A, little b, little c, right? So that's how you can figure out the gamut. You pick out one letter of each kind, you figure out all the possibilities of the three letters. So now that you know how to do this, you should be able to pause the video and figure out uh, what to do with the father. So with this father, the genotype is big A, little a, big B, little b, little c, little c. What are all the possibilities? You can have big A combined with a big B and a little c. You can have big A combined with a little b, little c. You can have little a, big b, little c. Little a, little b, little c. There are four different possibilities of the A, B, and Cs. Those are the gametes. 25. 
we have a mouse. Yellow is big Z and is incomplete dominant. So we have big Z as yellow. We have little z. Uh, we don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, let's say it's purple. Okay, um, a research lab, and you know, if you have big Z, little z at the same time, that is brown, right? Because in complete dominance, you're mixing yellow and purple, and uh, according to one of my students, yellow and purple makes brown. A research lab makes, makes 10 heterozygous mice, so we have big Z, little z, mates with big Z, little z. And among these offspring, 42 have brown fur, and 19 has yellow fur. How can you draw this Pony square? Right, so it already tells you that they're heterozygous. So you draw this pun and square, big Z, big Z, big Z, little Z, big Z, little Z, little Z, little Z. So if you look at the ratio of brown, which are these two, to yellow, which is uh, this one, right? It is kind of a two to one ratio. And as you can see, this ratio is kind of two to one, brown to yellow, right? But it's asking for the phenoty phenotypic ratio of all the offspring, so that has to be uh, you can do one to two to one of brown and no wait one to two to one of yellow brown and purple okay so again make sure you can't just write the numbers you need to write down the traits as well for a phenotype or the genotype for the genotype last question on this uh, what is this not Mendelian genetics. Okay, now we're looking at rabbits. We have white coat for CW. So it's always good if you have enough time, or even if you don't, it does really doesn't take that much time. It will make it will ensure that you will always get the question right. As you can see, even I'm writing it down, and I've done plenty of this. Right? We have white for big CW. We have black coat for big C, big B. Are co-dominant, that means if you have C, W, C, B, you will have black and white, I guess, spot, spotted rabbit, okay? But, but this rabbit is going to get individual black fur and white fur, and you're going to see kind of a black-white rabbit. So, um, and then these two are both dominant over albino. Okay, so now we actually can have all these different genotypes for an off for an offspring right we can even have little c little c for albino right so this is not just your regular um co-dominant case it's co-dominant and multiple alleles at the same time we have three different alleles wonderful okay um we have these are spotted okay great so right now we're con we're crossing a heterozygous black coat so it's already telling you that it's black coat so you have to have c big b but then, um, but then it's heterozygous, so that means it can't be sig B, C big B, C big B. That means it has to be sig B, C big B, little C. Oh my goodness! So that's heterozygous black coat, right? It's still black coat because you got this dominant black coat allele, um, but then it's heterozygous because it's mis mixed with a little recessive allele, and a homozygous white coat rabbit. So it says it's homozygous. White coat is CW, so that means you have CW and CW at the same time. Now we fill out the Punnett square. It's sick CB, CW. Nah, we're doing CW, CB only. Okay. CW, CB, CW, little c, CW, CB, CW, little c. This Punnett square is got really wide real quickly right so so this is your punny square okay hopefully yours looks so much better than mine uh, all right so the genotype of the parents we don't know which one is male which one is female i screwed up it's just either it's either one okay now you draw the punny square and you need to show the genotype and the phenotypes of the offspring um all right so we already showed all the genotypes now let's take a look at the phenotypes cwcb will give you little spider rabbits must be so cute CW's little c that has to your to be a rat, white rabbit because little c is a uh, albino so it's not just white it's albino it doesn't have any pigment it's gonna get little 
little red eyes. Um, this is a, a white rabbit. This one is another spotted rabbit. And then you have another white rabbit. So you have two spotted rabbits, two white rabbit, or 50-50% chance for both of these um, traits. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Um, overall, we have, we've talked about multiple alleles. We have polygenic inheritance. Those two are easily confused, so make sure you're no longer confused. We have incomplete dominance. We have codominance. Uh, we have the environment influence your trait. Uh, I think that's it, okay? And as a reminder, ABO blood type is an example of both codominant and multiple alleles, just like this rabbit case. We have two dominant versions, we have one recessive version, and then there are three alleles to the same exact gene. I hope this is helpful.